For March the 11th, 2022, we talk about Elden Ring, Valheim, and The Last of Us Part 2. Welcome to Level 405. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I am David Meismith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. We are back. As Ben said earlier, I have emerged from the mines, the Elden Ring <laughs> mines. For a moment, I have not actually beaten the game yet because uh, it's gigantic. Uh, but I am Is here. Is there a mine? Uh, many. There are, in fact, many mines. <laughs> Uh, it's the best place to get smithing stones. Well, Cole, I have, I, I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, how dare you? If you haven't finished it yet, uh, the content gods demand that you continue grinding at it until you are done. <laughs> no, 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 they don't. <laughs> I do not. He just has to be one step ahead of what he's podcasting about. So he doesn't have to beat it yet. I'd like to be a little bit more ahead than that. <laughs> <laughs> sure sure no, you, you treat it you treat it like a college course where you start out ahead of it uh you know and, and feeling like you're all prepared and everything and then by the end of it you're, you're finishing everything the night before it's due cramming the boss <laughs> the uh you, you know like it's always the intention to have it beaten uh you know uh like as as quickly as possible uh but like with this one i mean it's legit like people's clear times have been uh, you know in the 80 to 100 hours you know plus uh, so mm -hmm. it just like, like, yes, technically there have been more hours than that since it came out. You could say I've been <laughs> slacking in that regard. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I have to do other stuff. Like we had less recording, but we still had recording uh, yeah. <laughs> last, last I, uh, week. An excellent headline that came out of hard drive was, uh, right when Elden Ring released was reviewer who beat 80 plus hour game in a single week finds it slightly repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I have more questions about the game proper during the grind, but for now, I just wanted to ask, do you, have you played enough that, you know, kind of the format of how you're going to go about reviewing it with Gary or yes. Yeah. We have okay. a, we have, we have a reckon. We have a reckon on how that season uh, will play out on patreon.com slash duck TV. That's sweet. That's yeah. good. That's probably Slick. takes a load off at least. Yes. Yeah. No, I, the, the, the way that I put it on Twitter was, I chugged until I realized that chugging was impossible, and I, I, I fell back to brisk sips. I am currently sipping the game briskly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. well, we got to have spacers in there, too. Like, hmm? yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to know what a, uh, a Dark Souls hangover looks like. So No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I had one after uh, Dark Souls 2. Uh, mm. but that like I that, think that everyone was... had one after Dark Souls. <laughs> I, I like Dark Souls too quite a bit. Like it's it's a it's a really good game. It's just that was a game that is also like really really big. Uh, and mm -hmm. I you know beat it over the course of a week, and it just was you know it it it, it uh it, it it took a chunk out of me. You know, so tell tell me if you have a Dark Souls hangover on Dark Souls two and you throw up, is that how you get Dark Souls three? <laughs> High five, buddy. <laughs> so i was gonna say i think dark souls 2 is the dark souls hangover mm, okay mm. yeah um i, I mean i i i dis i disagree but uh that is a that is not an uncommon um that is not an uncommon position remember i i know nothing about these games i'm just taking blind shots here <laughs> yes yeah i i do i do not care for famously don't care for dark souls 3 people uh People have accused us of faking and not liking it for attention. Uh, after people mm -hmm. accused us of faking liking, um, uh, oh gosh, Dark Souls 2 for money. They accused us of being paid off for liking Dark mm -hmm. Souls 2. Well, you, you were paid in exposure. Of course. Ultimately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> like the image of, was, is it Miyazaki, the guy that's kind of the figurehead? Yeah, yeah. I just like the image of him like, Slipping you uh, uh envelope full of cash. 
<laughs> Keep we up the never, good work, boys. We will never <laughs> speak like, of this. I don't know if he even speaks English. So I, I, I just love the image of like just some dude doesn't know you somehow is passing you cash. Yeah. The envelope just says you are paid in giant red letters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so that I mean that that's uh, honestly like in the time that we've been you know kind of uh, not, not recording since the last time you recorded I've I've mostly been spent you know playing Elden Ring um, and uh, doing like home improvement stuff but nobody wants to hear about my oscillating multi tool you know oh, another nice. another big uh, Elden Ring question is do you kind of know where it ranks amongst the other Dark Soul games I'd, I'd have uh, to in general. I'd have to finish it. Like right now, okay. I, I really, really enjoy it. Like I'm having a, okay. I'm having a good time. Uh, like it would be hard without, without, without seeing it, uh, seeing it through to say sure. where it feels like it would, uh, it, you know, it would land. Does it got Better a shot than... at being number one? Mm, maybe. Okay. Better than Shakira. S- Sekiro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. For 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 some for some pretty fundamental reasons uh, regarding things like uh, like player choice. Mm-hmm. yeah so that is um my stuff oh and i got a new computer today or i ordered one those Ma- those max oh, buried the lead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no i'm excited uh they, they announced the, the the mac studio um which is kind of a like a midpoint b- between the mac mini and the mac pro um and i'm really excited um it's going to be showing up around the uh, around the end of the month which will be cool I, I think that'll be i think that'll be neat yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah side note uh day after we recorded last the war broke out that was kind of weird right um yeah, yeah yeah that was um hard that was that was um it has been hard to watch mm-hmm Maybe we don't need to get into politics on this episode, but I just wanted to throw that out there since yeah. that was something we haven't talked about or addressed since the yeah. last time we talked. It sucks. I feel like it's, it's not not really politics, though. It's just <laughs> like, don't be on the side of the fascists. Yeah. Uh, you, you think that would be an easy, non-controversial stance. No, uh, but uh, the, 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 the people... Uh, <laughs> the people who are starting a land war in uh in 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 Europe in order to uh grab land that they believe is part of uh an, an ancestral heritage uh hearkening back to a uh a, 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 a non-existent golden age uh with one of the primary goals being to crush LB, LGBT and minority people uh that is the side that is saying no it's Ukraine who has the neo nazis which they yeah. do like that the, there are some there they also have a jewish president <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> like who they say is a neo nazi yeah so uh incoherent is what i would say and don't come at me with apologia for again the country that is waging a war of choice and a war of aggression to again claim land in europe yep it's another I, it's... Okay. Another level reminder, don't kill people or don't yeah. support people who kill people. Yeah. Also, hey, Saudi Arabia, fucking cut it out with Yemen, you dicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Our hot take for the week, war is bad. <laughs> uh, ben, since you uh, since, since you opened that one up, how you doing, bud? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I, I, there were a couple days where I was probably following that stuff too closely. Yeah, feeling yeah. too great about all that stuff, but um, I think one at least positive or cool experience I had in the past two weeks that I'll talk about in the grind is I got to do the uh, Storybook Brawl tournament for the month. Oh, uh, oh neat! That I got Mythic, and okay. so that was a pretty fun time, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, that was nice. Hmm. Uh, that is cool. Um, how about uh, how about you, uh, David? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, had a uh, mini uh, Comic Con uh, locally. Uh, super small, most mostly just like vendors and uh, people dressing up because they want. I mean, I guess all Comic Cons and people dress up because they want to. But like, it, it was very much. I guess the event was more. Hey, let's come up with an excuse to all like 
dress up and do stuff Uh as opposed to, you know, being as much of an event as some of them are, which, you know, is kind of fun. You know, that's kind Mm -hmm. of endearing. Nice. Mm -hmm. Did you end up, like, getting anything cool uh, while you were there? Because I I always Uh, like seeing the vendors. There's there's a much bigger one with, um, like, a band I really like is going to be playing there, that sort of thing, in April. So I'm kind of, you know, saving my ammo for that. Nice. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm glad you had a good time. Dennis, how about you? Yeah. Um, I, this week, got the Pokemon Battle Arena starter kit game for Luke and Milo. What is Pokemon Battle Arena? Well, you guys, I don't want to be a kingmaker, but I think this Pokemon thing uh, might catch on here. Uh, no, so it, it's like a you know a box that you buy. It's got three pre-made decks, so you can actually play like the physical Pokemon card game. Um, mm-hmm. And Luke had gotten a bunch of cards from a neighbor kid and was all excited, wanted to try playing the game, and then realized that none of the cards were energy cards. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, we, we, we can't <laughs> we really need, actually play this game. We need um, mana. Yeah, and he he was he was like really bummed and and clearly was excited to actually play the game instead of just look at the characters. Um, so I picked this up and uh, we've spent the last uh, three days or so um, having Luke and Milo battle back and forth with uh, with Pokemon cards, like mm. actually following the rules instead of just yelling attacks loudly. Um, <laughs> One for blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now l- let me be clear. They still yell all their attacks loudly. I think their favorite part uh, is the attack phase of every turn where they yell the Pokemon's name and then tell them to use whatever thing before they put down damage counters. So, <laughs> Um, it is it is adorable, um, and I I had like a proud dad moment where uh, you know Milo is is playing. He's looking at his. He's like, well, I've got this card that would allow me to like. He didn't use these. I'm paraphrasing, but you know, I I could I could draw more cards by reshuffling my hand and was the card. But I don't want to do that because I've got this like combo in my hand, so I need to hang on to that. I was like, he's, he's learning. He's, oh my god, he's planning. Uh, yes, uh, and so that was Max Mid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's been a, a good old time. Um, there's like a, a fire deck, a electricity deck, and then a um, whatever Mewtwo is psychic deck. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and each one's got the you know the shiny eyeball deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep um and yeah so for like i've played the pokemon video games a little bit um but never played the card game as a kid so i'm learning the game alongside them as well it's a good card um, game it yeah. is yeah and it's the the thing that i really appreciate is that every game win or lose each side like got to have a cool moment Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I, I got my GX shiny Pokemon out, or I, you know, had this big turn where I evolved something and and got a kill with it the same turn, or or whatever. Um, also, it's very hard to not just say, yeah, you killed that other Pokemon uh, <laughs> as you're discussing what happened. Like, oh, I, I'm <laughs> I'm fainted. trying, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to say, oh yeah, that that one fainted, but it's, I we all know you killed it. Um. <laughs> see it always bothered me that like if you one why do you faint if you lose uh you know in in the uh video game and then also like you lose half your money it's like did that person just mug me oh 100 <laughs> percent yeah he, no no he uh, took, took money from your pocket to pay for the uber to the pokey uh healing station that's <laughs> it yeah no i think i think it, it in uh sword and shield at least it, it has some text screen about like you you carry your pokemon back so no oh, really? like you are you are conscious in that it just does not show your actions because that would require more than three animations from game freak and uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that doesn't happen can't uh can't be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so it, it's been super fun um and uh like i said i i i think pokemon might catch on uh at some point <laughs> Well, you better call those uh, the, the, those freaks at Game Freak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neat. Well, um, I'm happy you're having fun with the kids, even though you did technically sneak video game or game related stuff into <laughs> the opening. And we'll, we'll I, have... I like to think board games is a is a special um, 
extra okay. area. Okay, bad. But I can do okay. that. Okay. All right. Okay, Ben, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm just gonna <laughs> ben. I squeeze them in sometimes. Yeah. Are you are you saying Ben uh finds rule nuances? I uh, yes, I I, I, yeah. I am. <laughs> See, cool. the, 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 we need the, a new section for game lawyering of what <laughs> constitutes a game that we can include on the show. Oh my gosh. Not on the show in this segment. Also, it like I don't really <laughs> care. It's just a fun bit for now. I'll probably <laughs> drop it like in an episode or two. Um, uh, you know, one or two regular episodes like this is going to be, uh, what with the grind, the multiplayer and the end boss. And why don't we get started with the grind, the grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the last period of time or so, uh, let me look here and see David. Uh, we're going to go to you first because you have been away the longest. What have you been playing since you were last on? Sure. So um, been continuing on with uh, Idol Champions. That's kind of a uh, samey game, so I'm just going to go real quick on it. Okay. Um, there was a uh, another event, so that was fun. Unlocked a bunch of new uh, champions. Uh, they also did a like charity thing where you know, I don't know, buy buy some uh, you know stuff in the uh, gem store. Actually, ironically enough, the gems are not how you. Uh, the gem store is the in-game one, and the not gem store is the. Uh, but anyways, um, but yeah, buy some stuff in the whatever real money store, and they donate the proceeds to Ukraine, which was cool. Oh, nice. Uh, so did some of that. Uh, the other thing that's just uh, fun that I'm going to kind of pitch is um, the more I watch it, the more they're like tie in live uh, live play D and D streams become more and more compelling. Okay. Because it basically ends up they have. Something like three or four, like, uh, get you know, DMs, you know, basically three or four games that they sponsor, but you know, they all periodically trade off players and stuff like that. So, it's in effect, they have created like the D&D cinematic universe or whatever. Okay, so it's actually a lot of uh, a lot of fun. It's also kind of cool that uh, because of, you know, the nature of this kind of being based on this game and sort of, you know, having to support, uh, you know, that uh, the teams, uh, the players tend to be very heterogeneous and uh, homogeneous. Lots of different things Heterogeneous. Uh, in terms yeah. of like the characters alignments, which is not something you normally see from most adventuring parties. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, that's just a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, not, not a lot on this, just, you know, it continues to be a fun pastime. Here's how dumb I am. I was about to ask, Oh, what setting are they playing those games in? And duh, forgotten realms. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, although, apparently, now that everything is Wizards of the Coast, also like randomly, uh, oh, Planescape and uh, Ravenloft. I and I mean, <laughs> so those were always D and D related things. I think TS, right. T, TSR owned those. Yeah. So, I mean, so that makes that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's been fun. Other than that, it's just been Elden Ring, so I, I feel like I'm just gonna, like, I don't know, hold action until <laughs> Elden Ring, um, discussion starts. I, I mean, I, I am not going to bring Elden Ring for, 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 for mine, um, so go ahead and start, start your thoughts on it, um, you know, we can, if, if you would like to, anyway, if you feel like you've gotten far enough to say, uh, there's, yeah, so, yeah, there's no moratorium. David, or, your goal is to trigger Cole as hard as possible now that he's promised he won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not uh, promised I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just not going to bring it. I'm not going to, uh, you know, 
if people want to hear me oh, speak about thing. it, they, yeah. they, they can go yeah, they can go to Bonfireside Chat. I'm I'm interested in what you have to say. Yeah, he, he's not a pacifist, he just doesn't believe in wars of aggression. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so um where I'm at, I uh just beat the uh the first boss and then am uh exploring <laughs> the first dungeon. Okay, so you beat the, the first story boss and the first actual done so you so you beat margit or margit yes okay and you're 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 in stormvale castle all right correct yes um however i'm interested to see how the like over map uh and like stuff like that plays out because at least from what the what appears to be the case i've explored like at least two-thirds of the the overworld (laughs) Uh, so I'm guessing, yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing that, yeah, I'm guessing that is not like a thing, but regardless, um, yeah, I've spent, Cole laughs at you. I, if this you has kind knew. of been the, um, fallout of, um, of Elder School games in that, like, I've spent relatively little time actually doing anything i'm quote unquote supposed to be doing Mm. and a lot of time just getting like chased by demon dogs across um mushroom land yeah (laughs) yeah i mean that that, that's that's what they want you to do um you know like for for me anyway like the game tells you you can follow the trail of light that leaves that 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 leaves the uh um uh, save points right uh, mm-hmm. and, and you know that like that'll guide you to your next objective, and that will you know steer you. It's it's it's, it's like running a cat straight into a wall with a laser pointer. Not that I've ever done that. It will st- <laughs> it will steer you directly into those gates and that boss, which is like you know its move variety and like the amount of like arena coverage that it has is like real mid game Dark Souls three. You know, <laughs> like yeah, it's, would... it's pretty hard. Yeah. So, like, so yeah, I I would say it's yeah, it's what I would actually say it's probably um I don't know in terms of difficulty I had with it probably like uh top five um Soulsborne bosses for me in terms of difficulty or in terms of like quality like oh that was a really good fight in terms of difficulty yeah uh, and specifically in terms of how difficult it was for me by which i mean at least my experience has been um the in a Soulsborne game the more tools you have to work with the even though things get more difficult in absolute terms they get kind of less difficult relative to you as the player yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the, the, the... Uh, so for example like I've I've had to look at you know the wiki some because um oh uh, you know I'm running a arcane build that uh you know relies on status effects. Mm-hmm. However, I didn't actually have any weapons that could produce status effects. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh so so you know there's some stuff like that where like it was kind of artificially it's a little bit artificially hard for where it is in the game in the in where players are likely to start trying it. Mm-hmm. The, 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 so, the unspoken second part of what I said about how it like leads you right into that wall is you're meant to bounce off of it and like hit everything else. So like I went and found as much as I could that didn't involve going through, going through that. And like, I cleared the entire peninsula to the South before I went right. back and, and, you know, and, and, and took them out. So like, that is one of those things, like, whereas Sekiro especially, but even Dark Souls 3 to an extent got, got like this, um, you know, at a certain point, like that boss is standing, um, like at the base of that funnel, stopping you from going, going through your options narrow until you clear this. And then it opens up again. There are different places for you to go and get stronger or find a better weapon or find a better talisman. Um, you know, to make that fight easier, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The big thing, um, I try to be careful with is, um, I very much like, don't like the boss fights, particularly in, um, 
I I think the only one I liked the boss fights in were actually Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was specifically in the Chalice dungeons. And so I tend to be very careful not to, like, force myself into a situation where the boss fight is the only thing left and then I get burned out. Does that yeah. make sense? I, you're, uh, like, you know, like I said, I've not finished the game. I have never been in a situation where I felt like that was the case for me. There are. Okay, that's good. Because this is definitely, like, definitely three had that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, like, there, will there be a mandatory boss that you have to take down in order to, in order to beat the game? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ma- especially yeah. towards the end. But, like, as you uncover stuff they're just kind of always going to be options for you is that is 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 the sense that you get and you know to give you like an indication i'm like 40 hours in and you know i feel like i've barely scratched the surface sure yeah yeah no uh yeah it's definitely a very large game i something i'd be interested to see is i remember um and part of this is majora's mask but i remember some statistic that like in Majora's Mask before fighting the first boss you can have something like I don't know like 20 something heart containers or something Mm -hmm. and I feel like there's sort of a similar mechanic here where you know you can get a lot of freaking stuff before you have to really like commit to any of the bosses or anything yeah so I'm interested, I'm hoping at some point someone does, you know, crunches the numbers of, like, exactly how many, um, I don't know what they even call them, Estes flasks, um, in effect, yeah. you can get and things like that. So I was under the impression that, like, when you said there's, like, a lot to do on the maps, that it was just, like, bosses in every direction, or it's, like, you walk into this building, there's a boss, or you go around this field and there's a boss, but that's not the case? Or? No, no, um, like, there are there are field bosses, um you know that may pop you know pop up like on the road uh you know to from somewhere or like bosses who will be in some above ground ruins and like you'll go to many dungeons that feel like uh more heavily author chalice dungeons to a degree like there's they're they're they're, they're smaller um and each of them has like their own little hook but you're gonna get into those dungeons and there will be a boss at the end of it but like those you know are kind of chumps compared to the bosses in the legacy dungeons, you know, the, 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 the gigantic, you know, Stormville castle, like what David just got into is considered a legacy dungeon. So, okay. Right. I, and I've seen the boss that he's talking about the first one. Cause like every Twitch streamer has streamed beating that or playing that, you know, yeah. but uh, I would say, I would say in some ways I would almost describe what they have is like the inverse chalice dungeon by which I mean, One of the big things with the Chalice Dungeons is it's like this was the part of Bloodborne where it's not part of the quote-unquote actual game, so we don't have to make it fair. Okay. We can just make it as arbitrarily difficult or, you know, unfair or cheap as, as we want. Whereas I feel like there's almost the inverse here of like, there's all these field bosses and it almost seems like for a lot of them, the kind of the feeling is like we don't, because these are just, we're making a ton of these and there's a bunch of different things for you to experience. We're not really going to try to keep you from cheesing them. Yeah. So like a lot of these field bosses, like if you want to, uh, you can like fight them on your horse and that makes the fight dramatically easier sometimes almost trivially so yeah and but it's like you know the the point you know their their point was never to to gate you you know you know what i mean yeah and i and i think that like you know a concept that we talk about a lot uh, or at least that i talk about you know is like the the concept of like a a, a difficulty ceiling and a difficulty floor And Mm -hmm. I think that, like, you know, set the difficulty ceiling as high as you want. Give me control over the floor. Right, Uh, exactly. You know, which is to say that, like, in that situation, you have a field boss that's kind of chasing you down. You could decide to make it 
trivial by fighting it on horseback or by using, you know, throwables that will give it a status effect, you know, that will effectively kill it for you, you know, any number of things like that. Like you could do that. And if you say, oh, that's way too easy. Well, just don't do it that way. Fight it on, f- fight it on foot, fight it with the broken sword hilt, fight it, yeah. you know, like there, there are any number of ways, you know, it's fight it as a wretch. Yeah. 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 But if, if I fight it as the depraved, you know, like just you know, do us do a soul level one or, or whatever they call it. Um, <laughs> the, you know, there are any number of like, a, a, there are any numbers of ways to do that and it like can still be satisfying. Thing... Oh, go ahead. No, uh, 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 go ahead. No. The, the whole cool thing about video games is agency. Yeah. Right. You and, know, and like maybe one of the cool things with that. And I forget someone in the Slack said this. So like, I, I forget who, but was kind of saying they felt like a lot of the mechanics they added to this game were kind of uh, showing the middle finger to people that said, like, there is a quote unquote right way to play uh, Dark Souls. Because they gave you because, so many different ways to play it. <laughs> right. And I feel like a lot of a lot of the ways that always existed, but in some ways kind of weren't first class citizens are now. So for example, like uh straight up regular shielding, not like uh not like parry shielding mm-hmm. now has a, a a mechanic to open up uh like critical hit backstab type things yeah the guard counter oh, that's cool it's a it's so good <laughs> yeah uh similarly um range weapons seem much more viable as like a primary um or at least main um form of offense than they have in previous games mm-hmm. the oh, cool. other the other big thing is um you can now basically unlock as as effectively as loot um the uh npc summons yep and so uh Hmm. whereas like the the conventional summons that like uh people uh still exist these are more like they're modeled after the various monsters at least ones i've seen so far Mm -hmm. and they're mutually exclusive but they also um you can only but uh, no. You know, you, oh, go, go on. Sorry. No. Uh, they don't take any resource to summon anymore. So uh, you can only summon them certain locations, but most major fights are there. So you can just sum- basically summon wherever you want. Mm-hmm. So you can summon them in the overworld. Like you, you, you yeah. do not have to just like summon them out in the, um, you know, like right, right outside of uh, the door to a boss arena. Like if there is a tough you know, t- like a, like a tough set of ruins you're trying to clear. You know, where you know there's going to be a pickup at the center of it. You, you, you get those get those bad boys out, and um, you know it will fight alongside you, or in some cases fight for you, or draw attention of those guys while you fight these guys. Yeah. There's also um, a lot of quality of life improvements. Um, you can uh, anytime you're not in combat, you can teleport to any bonfire. Uh, which are now what lost glory or something lost lost grace uh lost grace i will never stop calling them bonfires i've been calling them bonfires for coming up on 10 years now so yeah so Mm -hmm. you can now basically from any point uh almost except for actually in dungeons uh teleport to bonfires when you're out of combat and Mm -hmm. you keep all your souls and stuff Mm mm-hmm uh, similarly, they've introduced, I forget what they are called, but basically like pseudo bonfires that if you die when you're nearby, you can re- uh, respawn at one of them instead of a bonfire. Yeah. And so-, so the end result is like they put them out front of a bunch of boss fights where they, uh, for some, you know, for some reason they, uh, didn't want to actually put a bonfire yeah so yeah uh you know all just all sorts of there's actually a map yeah it's Um, a good map too yeah yeah it is so uh the main thing the one thing i'm a little worried about and i'd be interested here if this kind of 
changes, but so far it seems like the game's somewhat more light on story than I'm used to in a Souls game. So yeah, the, the, the early going is definitely a little bit, a little bit lighter. Okay. Like I've noticed, it seems like a lot of the item descriptions are much less evocative. Although that could just be because there's a lot more items. Yeah, I mean, there's there, 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 there's some good stuff there. But for me, like, it's also just a matter of, I, like, I need context for this. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm enjoying, enjoying it overall. There's, uh, I really like the, uh, the enemy design of um, Stormwind Castle or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, the enemy design, uh, like all around, is is, is amazing. Uh, they brought yeah. back, I mean, tons of goofy stuff, uh, tons of goofy uh, um, uh, enemy designs. I mean, like I'm talking like Kingsfield goofy. Like they're going way back. Uh, they're not afraid to have, you know, the the deadly enemies that can kill you in one shot just be total dipshits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I I think the the weirdest thing I've seen is uh, so they're. There's a crafting system, so they've got the open world, like, collect herbs and stuff like that. It's mostly a good thing because it basically means that, like, you don't really have to scrounge for consumables. If you just vaguely pick up things as you go, you can just craft what you need. Mm -hmm. However, one of the things is, like, hunting animals and... One of the sheep species, their survival mechanism is just to, like talk and start doing summer assaults <laughs> <laughs> yep. so Wulu. It, pe people people love the wheel sheep yeah so uh yeah there's a lot of weird stuff uh the the birds are dicks yeah that's uh th th that is definitely an impression uh the, the, that is the meme uh <laughs> i think it was will um uh from everything to guppy he tweeted like i you know if i see a dragon on the on the horizon no problem bring it on fucker if i hear a bird uh then I'm in, <laughs> i immediately run for cover <laughs> yeah although strangely enough probably the enemy i hate the most are dragonflies oh yeah uh yeah. they they deal virtually no damage <laughs> uh like Except that, like, I'm fairly certain they do because they attack you. Like, I'm not even completely sure that I've ever been able to tell that they dealt damage. Mm -hmm. However, they do attack you, and they are crazy hard to hit. Yes, it's like the uh, it's like the mosquitoes in um, Blight Town, except they don't poison you. At least, not none of the ones that I have encountered yet poison you. It's important to be yeah, I, precise. <laughs> I think I think my favorite message I've uh, seen so far is, uh, and I really hope this was like actually a newbie and not just someone uh, being dumb in my head canon. It was, uh, you know, someone, uh, you know, message next to some bog like wasn't expecting bog <laughs> it's like this is a soulsborne game like <laughs> and, you really should have expected this and and pr prior prior to the game coming out miyazaki even like did an interview where he said like oh man we've got so many poison swamps in this bad boy <laughs> yeah yeah he's he's i love just some of his statements are oh. hilarious yeah seems like a good guy yeah yeah he does so so yeah, uh, I, I don't want to go on too far, uh, long, especially because, you know, if you want to hear about this, you should listen to Bonfireside Chats, but uh, it is a good game for good people. Yeah, I'm happy you're enjoying it, you know, because as, like, as I was playing it, I was thinking like, David doesn't really care for uh, care for Souls bosses, um, and this would be a good game for him <laughs> because this is the most like non-boss content to boss content. Uh, oh, that yeah. is that is in a souls game like not just because it's open world and there's like lots of space it's just there's a lot to do that is not you know banging your head against a boss until it falls down so you can bang your head against the next one so yeah and there's also a ton of just just like where there are difficult oh, enemies just a lot of fucking with them oh yeah like i i very much enjoy 
Yo, seeing seeing the bridge dragon because there were just like swamps, there will always be a bridge dragon, <laughs> and just being like, "Oh wait, I have a super fast horse." <laughs> <laughs> just try and catch me. So, yeah. yep, nice. Um, that all you got? That is all I got. Cool. Um, let's see. I I want to hear what you've been playing, Ben. All right, I got some more like non video game game content. Or I don't know, it's meta video game content. Okay. I wanted to talk about Storybook Brawl. Um, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, because because you uh, because yeah, you, you had did that tournament. Yeah, so I made Mythic in January. So at the end of February, they have a tournament for everybody who made Mythic the previous month. Um, and it was on it was over the weekend on a Saturday. There's like 800 people who qualified and signed up for it. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to briefly describe like the behind the scenes and kind of uh, uh, like what went on because it was kind of fun. So the idea is uh, everybody plays like six rounds of Storybook Brawl. Each game you're in a lobby of eight people. Um, and basically you get points for where you place in the lobby uh, for each game that you play. And then you need to make a certain number of points to qualify to go, to, go on to the next day. And so the way it works... I, I wrote this out in chat because it's easier to read than it is to like hear, but like hmm. basically the way it works is it's kind of like reverse like eight points for first and one point for eighth, but then you get an extra point if you m- make it in the top half, and then you get an extra point if you place in first is essentially how the points work. Mm-hmm. And, oh, okay, uh, yeah. and so if you get first place, you get 10 points uh, and it kind of decreases from there. And then you need to get 40 points uh, over six games to qualify for the day two. Um And so, like, you either need to get first in four games or get second in five games, that sort of thing. Uh, So it's kind of, it's a little bit strict. Basically, the way it shakes out is it's, like, one in eight people will move on from day one to day two. Um, So, and it was also early since I was on West Coast time. I think it was, like, well, quote-unquote early. Like, it was at 10 a.m. and you have to sign in, like, uh, 15 minutes ahead of time. The cool thing about it is it's, like, completely run on Discord, and they use, like, a heavy use of, like, bots to set everything up and tear everything down and communicate. Um, But it was, like, very smoothly organized. Like, uh, so the idea is they do a check-in 15 minutes before. They just ask you to respond, like, with an emote to the message to check in with just, like, a checkmark. Everybody does that. And then they pair people off in flights. Uh, so each game you do, it's a random batch of eight people. So it's like mixed up. You don't stay with the same eight people or anything like that. Um, they'll create a Discord uh, text room specifically for you. They'll pick a random person. They're the person who creates a lobby. Um, you can do. You can play this game with your friends, which has always like been a feature of the game. But that's how they're using it for the tournament. Is like you just create a lobby and you uh, give it a name, and then other people can join that named lobby and they'll join your game and then you can start the one person who's randomly chosen just make sure that's the eight people who are in the chat room or the eight people who are in the game before they start it mm-hmm. and then you record your results through a bot and that like will uh categorize everything but you just give it a command to do that mm-hmm. um and you just do that six times and uh and then at the end of the day then you you figure out if you go on or not um the other thing that happens is you can drop at any time uh so like if you scrub out and get like two eighth place finishes in a row, you can just uh, do like exclamation point drop and then the bot will automatically deregister you and you won't be in any of the future lobbies. Um, (laughs) So all that stuff was super smooth. Uh, First game I played, I got seventh place. I was, that was about what I was expecting since it was (laughs) like, you know, it's like all people are pretty good. It's like the top 800 people in the game. So, Um, but then second game, I got the heroes like Peter Pan and I got Hatball, which I think I mentioned on the, uh, podcast before is like being a a treasure combo you can get where spells are really cheap and you can, uh, cast them over and over again. If you get both those artifacts, Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I got that and I got first place in my second game. So I Mm. had, I think 12 points and then the third game I got fourth place. So I was at 18 points out of 40 that I needed to get halfway there. So it was like kind of on the right track towards possibly qualifying. So it's a little bit excited. Um, and I was like live texting with one of my friends who also like plays the games and watches. And so I was uh, kind of like updating them on my choices and stuff like that. And I was streaming it on discord so you could watch it. Um, and then I got second place the next game uh, with the horde dragon. Uh, I forget what the creatures that I had the next game I did Royals and also got second place. And so at that point, I just needed to get fourth or above in the last no. game. 
nerve wracking. Um, yeah, and so for the last game, uh, I had my hero selection. I purposely picked. Uh, there's one that's like an animal based hero where it gives you it gives you an option of buying an animal in the market every round that has a plus one plus one. But the reason why you pick that is it's a very consistent type hero. Like you know, you're guaranteed to get like a certain uh, uh, t- creatures of a certain type. You know, every round, and so it's good for like kind of getting a consistent uh you might not get first it might not be like breakaway or whatever uh but it's like consistent so that's why i went for it um anyway i got first place for my last game so i qualified for day two which was sweet um Mm -hmm. and uh so i was really yeah i was just like really excited about that uh and then the next day day two i played and i got fifth place then sixth place then seventh place and then i dropped <laughs> but, uh, so i completely scrubbed out day two but i was com- i was okay with that because like at that point you were playing with 100 people uh these are like streamers that i watch who i was playing against like literally the last game that i got knocked out of by i was one of the streamers that i watch most frequently so i was just really happy i was happy to be there as they say um and and then they gave uh, they awarded everyone who got to day two uh, like twenty dollars of their in game currency and stuff. So oh, it was nice. Yeah, so it was just like a really nice experience uh, overall. It was like really well organized and stuff. And I, yeah, and it, it just shows like yeah, it's not hard to run like a video game tournament if you do if you use this type of technology and stuff like that. I imagine they've like worked kinks out since they've done this like five or six times now. And it, even people were commenting like, oh yeah, this has been the smoothest one yet. So nice. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. It was a cool experience. Um, uh, it was, you know, it, it felt like uh, I used to do math competitions when I was in like middle school or high school. It reminded me of that, where it's like you, you're doing something you're really familiar with, but you feel this like weird amount of pressure, you know, and like, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I'm not used to like competing or doing things competitively like that or whatever. So it was. Uh, are there, are there yeah. any turns that you look at in retrospect and you're like, oh man, I wish I could get that, that back or like, oh, if only I'd made this different decision or you're like, I choked no. that or. Um, well, I'm not sure. I haven't replayed the day two as much, uh, just cause I kind of gave up hope quickly, I guess. <laughs> but, um, uh, the day one, I think things just came together pretty consistently. So, and, and that's the thing is it's not like it was an abundance of skill. Like to a certain degree, there's a lot of luck involved where it's like, you happen to get the right treasure at the right time, you know, whereas, it, you know, you could just have easily have like been going for a certain thing and just been like, just missed out on like the, by the RNG or whatever, and just been screwed over. So like, I think a lot of it is luck based. I mean, definitely other streamers that I watched didn't make it to day two, who are certainly better players than I am. So there, there is definitely a luck element, but um yeah, so there wasn't, especially with day one, there wasn't much of the focusing on, I should have done this, because a lot of them, like, a lot of the stuff came together. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the thing that was kind of weird is it was making much more conservative decisions, because you're not going for uh, first place necessarily, you're going for, let's not get eighth place, you know? So like, Yeah, the, the not worst. Yeah, so, like, let's make some pretty consistent, like, I'll give you an example. There's one hero where... Their ability is if you get three good characters, all of your characters get like plus two health. And if you have three evil characters, all of your characters get plus two attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is, it's something where it's not like a, you're not going to get like a blowout like combo or anything, but it's really strong early on because it's pretty, it doesn't matter what strategy you're going for. You can pick up good and bad characters all over the place. And Mm -hmm. so it's something that I, I picked that here like two or three times, I think between day one and day two, just because you're guaranteed to at least make it in the middle with that because you'll have a really strong like early game and then maybe you can figure out a strategy from there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, anyway, uh, so that was fun. And then after that, I made Mythic again for February. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the strategy of doing that is there's like two or three days between the end of the month and like the tournament. And most of the streamers are just like done after the <laughs> the monthly challenge, so it's like it's pretty easy to like level up on the like in that in that two or three day window. And so that's kind of what I what I banked on. Um, so, but anyway, that was kind of fun. And uh, more max minning from Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hey, you just need to make the four thousand rank. You don't need to be in the five thousand or the six thousands like the best players. You know what they just say? Gotta four thousand rank gets a degree. <laughs> gets but, to spend uh, their weekend doing this for twenty dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, sorry about talking about this on length. It was just a very novel experience oh, for me. No, so. no that's, I, that's, yeah, that's, that's cool to hear. Really it's cool to yeah. hear how it's run. Like it makes sense in a world of um, it makes sense in a world with Discord that they would use Discord to you know to make to make that happen. But mm-hmm. it's you know still neat to they, hear that it was like a good experience and that they've got it on lockdown and that like this is this is a game that has like you know, a strong enough and well-supported enough community to make this happen every, every month. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the, the, the poetic take is they use discord to create order. <laughs> <laughs> very good. It was, it was very impressive. Like, like, so every lobby that you play in, they will, they automatically will have a bot create like rooms for everybody and will move you like into it, like text chat rooms. Um, and and they'll tear them down at the end after everyone reports too. And they have like a bot auto update, like, hey, there's this many like pods open, and then it'll update the message like every five minutes or something like that. And um, the one part that was really nerve wracking is they will randomly choose one person and they will move you to a, a voice channel, and they ask you to share your screen and they do commentary Ooh. based on your decisions. And they follow oh, you God. until you either die or win. Um, that would have been. Not fun if I was selected for that, but thankfully I was not. So, uh, yes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, so that was like the big video game experience I had, uh, at least the, the like highlight or whatever. Outside of that, I've been playing a shit ton of Valheim, guys. I, hmm. I hmm. think I've let me check, I've put in, I've put 84 hours into it. Um, Jeez. so I think I was just starting or I was getting into it like a couple weeks ago, or I, I forget how far, but. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this part or not, is we got a server with a couple of my friends, and so we're all playing on the same world, and anyone can, like, log in at any time. Hmm. Um, we've, I think we've discovered every biome that exists in the game. Um, one of my friends is, like, on the last one, and he's, like, I think two levels ahead of where I am. I'm just getting into the fourth biome, um, and starting to, like, go through that. Uh, the game, yeah, so I'm definitely enjoying the game. The I think once I kind of like sunk my teeth into the building mechanics, uh, I I really like that. The building system is like as good or better than Subnautica, which was kind of like the bar for me for like really enjoyable like base building mechanics in a game. Um, this like scratches a weird itch of it being very like rustic, fikeny, like fantasy. But usually I'm not like as into fantasy as much as like sci-fi, so it was mm-hmm. kind of weird for me to latch onto this. Um, hmm. But I mean, the like the choice of like what you can build and how it's all integrated is all like really fits well together. Um, sorry, you were going to ask a question. No, last time you said like it it's easy to make stuff that looks really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, like, not saying you, you couldn't make stuff that look good in a different game that you know if you if you had the time and you know re- resources and stuff. But like that's that makes it sound really satisfying. That it's not just like yeah i made something functional it looks like shit i i propped myself up a little a little shack where i could be bad at building without being rained on but the fact that they make it so you can you know r- roll like that and end up with something screenshot worthy not that you'd even take a screenshot uh seems cool and good yeah and there's like an abundance of uh kind of strategies you can go into building kind of Max min other things, not to overuse that word. But um uh so I, I included a screenshot of the base that I have. One of the things I did is like so there's a hoe that you can have in the game where you can like level out ground uh and kind of or you can raise ground and uh, and stuff to your liking. You can use that to kind of make farms and kind of like make your base on a level surface, which has its own benefits. Um but one of the things you can do with this to cheese out is you can lift the ground up, like, I don't know, 10 or 20 feet. Mm-hmm. And you do that in a circle around your base. and then <laughs> Instant wall. N- yeah. And so nothing without wings can get into your base and attack it. And so <laughs> I included a screenshot of, like, trolls just, like, hanging out outside of my base, but not being able to, like, go in and attack it, which was just, Is, is awesome. there a rock falling on one of them? What is that? Uh, no, I think one of them has like a club and it's clipping through the other's head. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it I, I thought this was a moments before disaster shot here. <laughs> I mean, kind of. You got a club going through your head and it's probably <laughs> straight, but... 
Um, so that was something that's fun. Yeah. So I made like, we have our own like town with like the three or four people that are on the server, but then I made like kind of my personal spot, um, kind of like, uh, there's like some other aesthetics you can do where it's like the way you build like workbenches and like, um, was it uh, forges? There's like upgrades to those, but they kind of take up a lot of space and they have to be adjacent, but there's like a strategy where you can just like dig out a basement or like make a first floor and just put all those like. Uh, tangential things like on the first floor underneath where it is on the second floor so like you have this like very clean like room that has all your things that are like functional and then like every all this clutter is like out of the way and i don't know this sounds weird maybe like going too far in the weeds about it but like there's a lot of cool strategies to to make it look really good i don't have more screenshots otherwise i'd share them with you but like uh some very aesthetically uh pleasing like buildings i have like i made a circular building which i was really happy with it has like four turrets pointing out in the kind of four car- cardinal directions on each side. Um, I'm expanding it now as like the current project that I'm doing as it's like basically the size of a circle before it's going to be like the size of like two circles now, like a MasterCard or a Visa logo, a Visa logo. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that second circle is going to be like more like farmland space that you can grow vegetables in. Um, yeah. So I think kind of the other skills that I've kind of mastered is like, uh how to get food production and like how to make recipes for food because that's kind of like the lifeblood of the game is like you need to be able to make higher level type food because that gives you more health and stamina and that allows you to go in kind of the more advanced biomes and not like insta die when you fight people Mm -hmm. um and then you can do that long enough that you can get the like supplies from that area and then you can craft higher level armor so that you can completely be safe in that area and then move on to the next area yeah um so from that standpoint, it's like really well designed game in the sense that like, you know, for each biome, it's basically like the supplies you get from that biome will make you proficient in that biome. And they can kind of tightly control that, right? Like, okay, if there's like uh snozberries in this biome, we can make snozberry jam that, you know, like will give you to this level, you know? And so it's mm-hmm. like easy for them to, to design it in a way where uh, design, I, I'm trying to think of the way to put it is like uh, design the difficulty so that it it's, you know, it'll be easy for you in the end and it'll be hard for you in the next biome at the beginning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's a good flow. Um, I'm sure I'll probably Peter out of this in maybe a couple of weeks or so, uh, but I'm definitely enjoying it for now. So, yeah. Nice. I mean, even if you Peter out in a couple of weeks, he still put 84 hours into it in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, I, I so. just love Ben that the the fun you had with your video games was the tournament organization aspects of Storybook Brawl and the base uh, layout aspects of Valheim. <laughs> yeah, I need to get better at fighting. Like right now, I'm just I have a spear and I just like stab people with the spear till they die. But I haven't really <laughs> invested much. I need to get like a shield so I can actually like parry and block and stuff. I haven't really learned to do that yet. So, but, but you haven't figured out what kind of room you would want to keep your shields in and where it should be in the order of the armory yet so it's it's you're, just not worth you're saying this out. like it's a joke but i believe that is a real concern <laughs> so i don't know how they to did, handle this disrespect they did add an armor stand item where you can put like your pieces of your armor on it it's like a dump of course well, to, like showcase it off <laughs> why else would you have armor wait what why else would you have armor without that yeah yeah, yeah gotta have that fashion uh fashion souls yeah fashion <laughs> Fashionheim. I also, I also sailed a boat by myself, which was a harrowing experience, probably because of Dennis's story. <laughs> with all the resources on it. As long as, as long as you didn't take up too much copper, you're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was even like a serpent uh, pursuing me in the ocean, but I was able to just outrun it and ignore oh, no. it. But, yeah. But good, good thing the wind was on your side. It was. Yeah, it very much was. I, I think that's what's so stressful about it is like at any moment the wind could change and then you're just screwed. Yeah. Then it's like fine shore quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yep. Nice. That's all I got. It sounds like you've been busy. Mm-hmm. Um, Dennis, how about you? Yeah. So I, I finished a big one. Uh, I finished the last of us too. Ooh. Yeah. So that's the last recorded. So Ben, I, I know you've been itching to talk about this. Um, and I mean, man, that, that game just from a, a, a storytelling and thought provoking standpoint is a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, so if, if, what's the spoilers on this game or like, what's the statute of limitations? Here, here's, 
I mean, I, I, I've beat it. I don't care now. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I haven't um, beaten anarchy. anarchy. <laughs> I haven't beaten it, but I intend to. Okay. okay. So, Have you played any of it or? I mean, I played like the opening hour. So like, I have met and done a few of the tutorial things with okay, a second okay. character. So I don't. I don't think it's yeah. Not I, I, spoil anything. <laughs> I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say you spend uh, okay a significant amount of the game playing as the antagonist, and I'm not sure which part of the game that is. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, every everyone in the game is both a protagonist and an antagonist. If you know yeah, what I mean. so. they they do that they do that extremely well um and everyone that you encounter there's just so much thought and depth put into like here's why this person is a total piece of shit here's why this person like you completely understand and see is the good guy and it's like i the, i i finished the game and i i you know was kind of watching the end of it i was like this this game was um uh, a meditation on what happens when you feel like you need to make a person suffer more than the suffering they've caused yeah like that is that is what the game lays out in front of you and allows you to experience and take part in um and i i think the thing i'm most impressed uh, uh, about the story is their restraint in not getting preachy or not not kind of coming down with instructions on how you should feel about it, mm-hmm. um, and that that is not to say they do like both sides or ism or anything like that. Um, it's just Naughty Dog does such a good job portraying people as deeply human, um, and and like you might hate what they've done, you might uh, you might. You know, I mean, you're you're going to hate what they've done. This game is about doing awful, awful things, um, but you can always understand where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's it's The Last of Us. Oops, all Joel's. Yes, <laughs> 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 that is absolutely true. And, and I mean, uh, just just based on your description, right? Because you, mm-hmm. you know, like it, 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 I, I feel pretty, I feel pretty um, solid on my read about the quality of character that Joel evinces, right? But mm-hmm. they're playing in a space of ambiguity to the point where, like, somebody could have a valid read that is that 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 is contra to mine, right? So mm-hmm. when I when when I say when I when I say that you know I have no idea what happens to to Joel in this game and I kind of I kind of don't want to hear it here I'd like to I'd like to see it um, yeah but um, <laughs> it, it, you know just uh, the fact that they are leaning into that with a specific you know if the first game was partially about trying to not lose something that you feel represents you lost something that represents mm-hmm. something you lost before. Uh, be that civilization um, or your daughter. Um, this mm-hmm. one, you know, being about revenge in a way that is, you know, maybe a little bit more nuanced than you know when you <laughs> if if you set out for if you set out for revenge, be sure to dig two graves, one for them and one for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. It, they do a I mean, really good job game, of making you're you're a lot of graves. Oh, so many graves. <laughs> so many graves. <laughs> Um, and I, I talked about, you know, when I, when I had my first impressions of the game, how impressed I was that you could sneak through stuff if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the, the game retains a lot of that openness to where even, even in like the final areas or in the most difficult areas, um, I never felt like I was required to sweep it to move on. Yeah. And there, there were still sections where I reached a point of like, all right, fuck this place. Like I've, uh, <laughs> yeah. I see my way out and I'm taking it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it's actually like the really, really um, gratifying to like, dash off there's guns firing from behind you and you kind of burst through a door lock it behind (laughs) you and feel like you got away with something like they make that satisfying they make that feel um you know if you're playing as director they make that feel like a a very valid choice yeah um the other thing they nail in this game and it doesn't really come out until the the later portions are boss fights 
um, there's there's probably two or three encounters that I would I would really characterize as a a boss fight. And you know, if this game did health bars, there would be a giant health bar uh, at the top of the screen mm-hmm. kind of boss fights. And it is um, some of the most intense, uh, rewarding encounters that I've had in games. Uh, on on par with any and you know pick pick your game that that has great boss fights um this is this is one of them um i i will not spoil some stuff that i was thinking about talking about cole knowing so, you, know, you still mean to work your way through it but there is there is a section of this game cole that is custom designed for you Ooh. Uh, that I, I cannot wait for you to to get through i'm not even going to say why just uh Whenever you get there, you know, years in the future, you're, you're going to know <laughs> you're going to finish a boss fight and go, oh, my God, this whole this whole section was a, a love song uh, <laughs> to me personally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, the boss fights are excellent. Um, they they do a great job also doing um, duels where, you know, it's it's a, it's a one up and, and you feel like you're evenly matched with an opponent. Um duels that use all of the stealth and even crafting mechanics as well as the combat mechanics i mean the original the original last of us only had one boss fight if i recall correctly and if you don't count well i mean i I was i was i was thinking of um uh you know the cannibal uh Mm -hmm. but um i mean the the, tank (laughs) i feel like they had a few boss fights yeah yeah i I was gonna say if you don't if you don't count the uh the 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 tanks and i'm i'm only discounting those because those aren't so much like they're they're set pieces but they pop up a Mm -hmm. couple of times like that is like a it feels like a mini boss variety of an enemy um that shows up Mm mm-hmm um yeah i I forget what i was going to oh yes so as a sequel to a game that had you know what felt to me like one boss fight hearing that they do several duels and that they're not just the fucking pits uh (laughs) sounds good to me yeah and and overall the gameplay does a really good job kind of stretching to the edges of all its all its various facets so like i said crafting stuff stealth stuff overt combat stuff um you know vehicle related stuff um it kind of it kind of everything gets its chance to shine and and kind of prove out that like you know it deserves to be there Mm -hmm. and and you know um it it, uh does well in the spotlight um ben i I don't know if you can think of any of the systems of the game that felt like eh they could have polished that a bit more um one of the things I thought was so good is like how well integrated it is. Like none of those things overshadow like the environment you're in and like the, and the narrative, you know? So it's like, even if you have like a vehicle or like boss thing or whatever, it's like, it, it doesn't feel like it's, it's not like um, maybe like in metal gear where it's like fairly clearly like, okay, now this is like a boss thing that you're going to just like focus on this. It's like much more integrated in the environment where it's like, Oh yeah, like we spent like the last like hour kind of pursuing this person, and now like we're fighting this. Per- you know, like it's it mm-hmm. just feels much more seamless and much more like a like a amusement ride. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing I was gonna draw attention to, yeah, like the like the part that is like crazy is like the quality is so high, and this is such a long game where it's like it's consistently like good quality, like the the art design of all the settings you're in. Uh, like all the way through and it's like yeah so it's like i would expect this quality to be like maybe a 10 hour game or something and it would be like a masterpiece game of the year but the fact that it's like four times that length and it and it maintains that quality and like there's something there's there's more like cinematic stuff to it in the sense that like there's a lot of symbolism in the environments they choose um uh without saying anything about the ending or spoiling anything about the ending the ending has very like uh, cinematic feel to it where it's like a sort of payoff that you would see in a movie but it's in a video game mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. yeah uh oh, makes me I, to, oh go ahead make, it makes me want to play it again because uh <laughs> just just play it on with like the ultra hard no hud system and just ruin it for yourself yes. um, no. <laughs> <laughs> that breaks um, inversion for me <laughs> yeah i i've thought of a system that they need to work on um okay and it is the balance system when you're walking across a, a thin platform mm-hmm. um so again without without saying anything but that, that's just a, the, every game has that right hey i gotta walk across this rail i don't like it and i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna lean side to side and, and like move the left stick so you don't fall 
um i could never find the the sweet spot of of like i i i always was surprised that i fell like i was like i I didn't know i was anywhere near close to falling it just felt like the game was suddenly like that's it and it's i I had no the like the visual feedback the haptic feedback all that kind of failed me on those um and there's there's sections where it, it feels very important to not screw that up because um you know it, it being up high counts at places that's the i don't know how to <laughs> I'll, I'll back away from it's that it's bad one, to but fall off things it's bad to fall off things yeah um and especially bad for other reasons and and to just uh, you talk about immersion breaking stuff to have to do a section you know three four five times because yes. you keep on falling um at a climactic moment uh is is really annoying and then it it undermines when they try to do other interesting things so it's just yeah. yeah it that that uh that feedback uh visually could have been a lot more uh well defined so um so that you don't interrupt your flow yeah yeah um Man, the one thing I guess I'm missing from this game is is the multiplayer. I love the multiplayer of The Last of Us. You did. Uh, you had like a crew mm-hmm. you rolled with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and it, it was one of the only multiplayer games where randos uh, on voice chat were like consistently helpful and and focused mm-hmm. because it, it was such an advantage to, to do so. Yeah. So there might be a correlation with like not as many people playing it and people being nicer on it. <laughs> that's why yeah. it got scrapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That might be true. And, and, um, in order yeah. for multiplayer to be successful, it has to be big enough that playing it is a horrible, horrible experience. Yeah. That's right. Steve Rocket <laughs> League. Yeah. Uh, Cole, do you know the setting of the game? Uh, you start in Jackson and then you go up to Seattle. Okay, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to spoil this, so I, okay. Seattle, the way they handle Seattle, like the setting of it, is so well done as well. Like it's the it pays like such good respect to all the different uh, neighborhoods that you're in when you're there. Um, and yeah, that that part's just very very impressive. Well, you you literally in the in the small section where uh, you were spectating me, were like, oh yeah, that stand is is a block from my house. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They show a dry cleaner that's near in my neighborhood. Yeah. Like it was even down to like fall it's where I'm like, okay, you would be on this road right now and it is curved the same way that that road is. So like <laughs> this checks out and then you <laughs> took a right and it's like, that's Melrose and that overlooks the highway and that does check out. That looks good. You know, that's uh, great. That's yeah. yeah. I, that, that's cool. That you got to have that experience. Yeah. I am. Um, I don't remember the space needle being on an Island. Did I miss something? <laughs> I don't remember that either. Maybe, uh, maybe it's like, uh, Escape from LA, dude. Maybe that part of the land just drifts off into the Puget Sound. Yeah, yeah I, I may, and I also could have just misunderstood where the landmarks were. Like maybe, maybe I was just using it to orient myself, and it wasn't supposed to be on the place I was. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I, was, I would actually have to. I don't even remember to what degree they should base needle in the game. So I'd need to choose to see if that was the case. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the last of us two is, uh, I'm very happy. It was on my PS4 bucket list. Yeah. And now it's off the list or it's in the bucket. It's, I'm not sure how this works. Th- yeah. What is, uh, I think the bucket is kicked now. No, you kick the bucket. It's a bucket list because it's stuff bucket. you have to That's do right. before you That's kick right. the bucket. Yeah. Which what, is super is dark. The, yeah. Is it, is the, um, is the list taped to the bucket then? I think that's. No, I don't think I, I, this I, is shorter. Yeah. Mm. the bucket is lighter you, you've crossed it off of your bucket list oh my god it's a bucket of lists no um, <laughs> this is getting silly yeah <laughs> another game on my bucket list any other questions about the last of us too <laughs> uh, are you gonna play it again anytime soon or are you like good taking a break from it for a while man i i need a lot of distance to just recover emotionally like it is okay. a dark game and you you watch really dark things front and center and, and being a video game, you participate that in them. Yeah. Um, and you know, as much as I tried to like sneak around and avoid encounters where I didn't have to fight, like there were also sections where I saw red and, and like, you know, lots of people died. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. so it, I think 
that is a game that you kind of got to go into uh, knowing and wanting that kind of really heavy experience. And they, they make it totally worth it, but I, I there's a good long time before I'm going to play it again. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. I almost, I wonder if I would go back around and play the last of us the first before I, I came back to part two. Cause it's been a, I, my, my memory of that game is getting increasingly hazy as well. And I wonder if, if some things um, that are explored in two would cast one in a different light. It's still, I mean, it holds up. We played it um, for WAF, I think, in 2020, 2021. <laughs> one of those. God help me. Um, 2020 is a good year to play The Last of Us. You yeah. Know? You know what? They didn't murder enough people. <laughs> <sighs> it's bad when the game starts to look pretty optimistic. Yeah, I mean, that like The Last of Us 2 came out kind of in the middle of the pandemic as well. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Who uh, other other last of or other um, bucket list game that I I have started uh, is Near Automata. Oh shit! Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one you Ben, you were talking about just how how much intention goes into um, the places in The Last of Us. You know, Near is also in kind of this post apocalypse. And granted, you are interacting with the world in a different way. You're like leaping across buildings, whereas The Last of Us, the entirety of a whole section of the game is just trying to get through one building, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it really struck me when I started near just how empty it felt in relation to I just spent 80 hours or, you know, however many hours crawling through these incredibly <laughs> dense um environments where you could look at any shelf and there's a personal story and pictures and um you know every sound matters um and then you know you boot up near and it's just like yolo <laughs> yeah. is so, it like mirror's edge where you're just on seeing the tops of buildings all the time or uh yeah i mean all the buildings are kind of bombed out husks and like i said you're you're an you're a super soldier android um and so you can you can jump across uh streets from building to building with ease and you know you're you're fighting things that are literally the size of sky skyscrapers so the game is just on a different scale yeah. okay um and you know uh, that is that is not a detriment but for the small sections where you are in an enclosed space it just really pressed on me how empty that space was uh in a way that i don't think would have happened had i not just played the last of us 2 yeah and uh I feel like, am I not correct? You're you're fighting things the size of skyscrapers when you're not fighting the android robot. Uh, yes. <laughs> the oh, I mean, yeah, they're just the kind of the standard the standard machine that is not a uh... the 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 mascot of android phones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, I mean, we're t talking too much about like the distinctions. I mean, the entire game is kind of about this the the distinctions between humans, androids, and those things you're fighting, or uh, like yep. a, like a good portion the, of it. Yeah. The the machines versus the androids and the um it it is um you know loves to wax poetic on that front. Yeah. Um. And I'm I'm early in the game, but it it already kind of has that sci-fi syndrome of world building where they introduce the world the way it is almost exclusively to show you how it's not actually that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if 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 that kind of flows, where it's like, hey, this is a society where, um, you know, X Y Z is the norm. Oh wait, X Y Z was a lie all along. Uh, <laughs> and and so there's just like almost every facet that they've introduced has been subverted in that way um, to the point that you almost expect it. And it's like, okay, I, I assume that everything I meet or interact with is going to have something else going on. First it's um, one way, then it's the opposite. We all understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but the game is, is charming as all get out. And I know it's been talked about on this show. So I, um, I went in uh, expecting a certain level of tomfoolery um and and kind of um you know kn knew that it was going to do like multiple endings and and there was going to be some of this like you know this this game goes places this game is is going to go off the rails in in a thousand different ways um but i i don't think i was prepared for just how much it does that with every facet of the game um right down to like 
I, I didn't even know like you boot up the game and it's like, oh, I'm I'm playing a twin stick shooter. Mm-hmm. That okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um now it's now it's an R type game and now it's you know, now it's an uh, Devil May Cry game, and now it's and they just like it keeps on flipping through genres. Now it's a 2D side scrolling platformer. <laughs> um and uh you know that that is really uh disorienting in in a way Mm -hmm. um but none of it none of it has been so difficult that it's been frustrating yeah um and it's just really fun to encounter a game on those terms where it's like i i don't have any idea what to expect and it's kind of conditioning me to just expect something crazy at every turn yeah it's playful in that way yes and and playful is a great word for this game like it is it is charming it would it would charm my pants off if my character had any pants yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, the and hopefully this isn't too spoilery, but the the one reveal the first time you like go out to find the machines, <laughs> um, like the, the the nature it, of the location that you find them and what's going on there is just oh, like my jaw dropped. It, it, it took my yeah. breath away uh, when I just, uh, yeah. It playing you're playing a dream. It's, uh, <laughs> I it, it's really I didn't expect way. something that whimsical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how Which far again, are you into? To the game are you um i just um let's see i just did the huge um twin stick shooter section where you fight the giant robot that comes from the sea mm-hmm. the ancient giant robot that comes from the sea yeah um and that is that's probably where my one gripe is so far is the twin stick shooter sections um especially the ones that are positioned as boss fights uh never lean hard enough into the bullet hell to be interesting yeah um, and significant portions of, of the boss that I just played, that was that format. Like you could kind of pick a spot at the screen and fire at the target and, and you didn't have to move. Like they were, they were putting out lots of bullets, but there weren't enough bullets that you couldn't shoot down. Um, that there were just lanes where you could just sit still. And, and literally it was like, I'm, I'm just sitting here and, and waiting for a health bar to go down. I'm not doing anything interesting. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the health bars could have been trimmed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, you know, it's the, the game. If you don't like that, don't worry. You're going to be on and doing something else crazy in a couple seconds anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, I'm, I'm still early. Um, and the game is charming as I'll get out, uh, all the little vignettes and stories of the side quests are fun. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, getting kind of funny that the main characters are still struggling to grasp the idea that the machines are not mindless killing uh, <laughs> machines. <laughs> like they, there's still regular dialogue of like, wait a second. They said what, but aren't they just mindless killing machines? <laughs> it's like dog, you were hanging out in, in like a village with them yeah. chatting about existential questions. Like how, <laughs> how is this a surprise now? <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, that, that point is, is a hammered home a little heavy. Yeah. Um, to, to, but, to, uh, it all comes with the territory to set your expectations. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as, as you're playing, uh, you're going to see credits and things that are called the, like the, you know, the endings are not really endings. It's kind of just like chapter breaks, you mm-hmm. know? So, Oh, I got, I got credits for eating a fish. Like, yes. Yeah. Not not in game credits to spend. I got end credits mm-hmm. for eating yeah, well, a fish. You ate the wrong fish. Uh, I told you not to. So that, that is true. That that one is on me. <laughs> but the, in my defense, the character that told me not to was named Jackass. So I feel like there's a little bit of a, a opposite day effect going on. I, I mean, I figure like a jackass would know which fish is poisonous because you know a jackass would try it and get real sick. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that would uh, that would make sense. Yeah, um, that that same jackass also um, takes you out into the field to do science and collect data <laughs> by uh, fighting and and uh, massacring robots. So that that's entertaining as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's um, that's been a lot of fun and um, is uh, something I'll, I'm sure I'll give an update on as I get further into it. Um, after that, I think I've got uh, God of War on my uh, bucket list. Uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. And then I think Sekiro. Uh, and really, that's that's it. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Nier, I, I'm probably the least experienced in Nier of, of this group. Maybe, Ben, I don't know if you've played it. I have not played it yet, but you're making it sound pretty tempting. It's on my wish list. I'll put it that way. Nice. Um, is that all you had? 
Uh, yeah, those are my two big ones. Uh, I am trying to stream near because that was it was I, I put up a vote on which of my bucket list games to play next, and, and mm-hmm. people recommended it. So uh, you might be able to catch that and come say hi. Where can people watch your streams? Yeah, um, uh, at uh, or not at, but Deck of Wonders on Twitch. Cool. Yeah, um, I don't have anything. I, I it's just been it's just been Elden Ring. Uh, I guess I'll take this opportunity too to direct people if they didn't listen to it. Um, uh, Jala and I last Friday we did a uh, bonus level about the second Phoenix Wright game, uh, and I've moved on to playing the third, uh, which is much better. So. Uh, but this is not my first time going through it. This is this, you know, I, I played and beat this game over a decade ago. Did you guys re- record that before you started Elden Ring? I forget. Yeah, yeah. we, yeah, okay. we, we, we recorded it. I think the week it was like, like a couple days before Elden Ring came out. Okay. Very cool. Um, well, se- segment break. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Dennis, explain what's going on. Yeah, you know, uh, I think a lot of times you have that game that has really cool ideas, uh, maybe if you're reading about it before launch, um, and then the ideas just aren't executed that well. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a nugget there that you would preserve if you could. So the question is, if you could give those ideas a second shot, either by doing a reboot of the game or, or just through a new game entirely, how would you do that? Yeah, and I'll get us started here with uh, Greg, who writes, It's a small nitpick, but Squall's Gunblade in Final Fantasy VIII has always bothered me. It's a really cool idea, being able to both slash and shoot. Um, They make a huge deal in the game about this weapon being hard to train with, how skilled Squall has to be, etc. But he never shoots from the gun. What's Ah. the point in building it up and having this cool-looking sword with a gun built into it? Um... (laughs) If he just slashes enemies to death all the time. Um, and that's just one game where they do that to you. Say, hey, this weapon slash item can do X, Y, Z. And then all it really does is X. Don't mention something if it's not going to be used, folks. I don't know if like, I don't know if they explain it in the game. I just always assumed that um, the, like it it fired so it would fire a cartridge and that would uh, and, like if you timed it while you were slashing the like the expelled gases would cause more damage to them. I like I never because they don't have a barrel. I never assumed that the gun blades were actually a projectile weapon. So I oh, thought really? you could like hold down a button to do extra damage or something with them. It was it was like a Super Mario RPG or Paper Mario kind of thing where it was just a um it was just a uh like an active time battle kind of thing like okay we're going to throw in a little timing element to make it so mm. that this game isn't just tap attack tap attack tap attack. Yeah, I always assumed that was the thing. Yeah. Maybe uh, they were just out of ammo. Uh, maybe yeah. <laughs> it's the a bullet entire shortage. game. He did yeah. so much training with the gun blade he used all the bullets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's your problem. Mm. uh let's see david what does callum say uh callum says not to navigate away from the page okay Uh, callum (laughs) says extinction jumps out for me single agile warrior seeking no uh single agile (laughs) warrior (laughs) fighting big things attack on titan stuff seemed like it could be fun it was awful the controls felt terrible in the hand the scenarios were not fun, and being the Giants didn't even feel that satisfying. I think it would uh, need the gameplay entirely redone from the ground up. Not good at thinking of game design elements, but something more than kill all the big things before they destroy too much. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I forgot this game. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, okay, there we go. Now I remember it. This is the uh, the Turtle Rock people, I think. Right? No, mm-hmm. no. This is this is incorrect. De- 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 developed by Iron Galaxy. Yeah, you're think you're thinking of Evolve, which is going to yes. be my answer. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I don't yeah. know this game. Weird. Huh. There's so many Attack on Titan jokes I can make with this, but all of them make me feel bad. <laughs> oh, and that's what you want a joke to do is uh is feel is feel bad. Speaking of feeling bad about something, okay. Ollie says Spec Ops The Line. Ooh. Uh, I think it's a good game that could have been great. My biggest gripe is that one of the most important parts of the game, 
the white phosphorus scene is later played as this big morale choice moment, but you never had a choice. You cannot progress further in the game without using it. And this is why I feel games have always faltered uh, at a moral choice aspect in games by either never giving you a choice or making the choice uh, work out better in the end. See harvesting little sisters in Bioshock. Yeah, it's uh, uh, a, you know, with the latter one, especially if there is never a cost associated with uh with, with making the morally correct choice it is imparting mm-hmm. the idea that values uh don't need to be costly right and see the thing is you just need to invest the souls when you take them in the short term and then you get more than you would in the long term if you're good <laughs> you just have to be truly evil <laughs> well i think i think it's it's the the idea that um good choices always have to be pragmatic in some way like yeah. no one's brave enough to say that you you are you make the right choice purely because it's the right choice and there's no reward I think Mass Effect got close to having having it be like gray zones as like, well, this is the good quote unquote thing, but it's going to have this like cost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and I correct me if I'm wrong. I read Spec Ops the line as like they they the um the idea that there wasn't really a choice there and that you were on rails and, and kind of corralled into doing it um was kind of played into the themes of the game, whether intentionally or not, but they were yeah. i mean it's it's very it, it's very explicitly your choice is to walk away your choice is to turn the game off i think ollie mm. knows that because ollie has played the game i think ollie might be rejecting that as um uh, a valid or meaningful choice for a game to force you to make you know yeah in the, in the, in the context it, of it, it almost calling back to the last of us 2 i saw a lot of people mad saying like oh the last of us 2 is a game that's trying to make you feel bad for playing it uh and yet you know that's, yeah, don't play this game uh, is not is not necessarily an interesting choice. Yeah. And it's not like Spec Ops Line was trying to say like, hey, this is a game about meaningful choices all the exactly. way through. Like yeah. there is like a narrative they're trying to tell with it. So yeah, it. it but I, I mean, I get what they're saying where it's like you're put in a situation where you might not want to do something and you don't have the option to do that. And that can feel unpleasant. Or yeah. it's it's hard to feel the character agonizing about that or relate to the character making a choice when... <laughs> like you you don't have one yeah right i i I hate to be like (laughs) digs up an old joke that he made kind of guy one of the puns that i'm most proud of is when i called spec ops the line a worst person shooter (laughs) (laughs) you stands stands up both spec ops the line and that pun (laughs) uh let's see that was ben dennis what does patrick say Patrick says, we happy few had a really good theme in trailers that made it look amazing. Then to have the game released to discover it is a survival game and full of bugs just killed it for me. I ended up trying it on Game Pass. And even though I found the story interesting, the systems caused me to bounce off. They made so many strange choices with that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my one of my favorite things for our, like our previous uh, conversation or a previous topic is that it's the only game I've seen that allows you to uh, craft non-lethal weapons, and then that has no bearing on the gameplay whatsoever. (laughs) Well, wait, weren't we just saying we wanted a choice where the the good choice wasn't rewarded in a big obvious way? (laughs) Yeah, but generally it should be different. Mm. Yeah. it should be have an effect <laughs> yeah it shouldn't just be you feel you you, you feel like you, you got you got good boy points for using the good bullets and not the bad bullets mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it feels like they made the demo before they made the game and that might not be the best way to make something yeah, yeah. it also i at least me felt like they couldn't they kind of, the game was kind of split between paranoia and psychedelic and they never really committed to one or the other yeah i mean to be fair like the 60s and the 70s did have both <laughs> uh let's see here david writes uh a parenthetical here at first just wanted to throw this out there but david mentioned the game in fernax on a previous episode and i checked it out because of him i'm loving the game thank you for nice. sharing that david um uh but david's answer is uh and i suppose i would have to go with fallout 4's settlement system I would build straight up fortresses with turrets on all the walls and just about every building 
uh, to just never get attacked. But then again, who in their right mind would even think about breaking into something like that? Still, would have been fun to see a huge attack happen every once in a while. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's, it's it's one of those things. If your defense value is high enough, people just won't attack it. Or you mm-hmm. won't get called to go in and defend it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the reward of doing well should be now you don't get to play. <laughs> it's oh, weird. Yeah. yeah, it's like that that old movie. The only way to win is not to play. Uh, now mm-hmm. we're talking about Spec Ops again. Oh, wait, no, no. It's the other <laughs> way around. It's the only way to play is not to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, David, what does what does David say? That I is didn't a do this David sandwich right there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We, we have three uh, Davids in a row. David, David, and David. <laughs> so David says, Seventh Saga, the game I've spent the most hours playing while never being a- able to beat it. It's a SNES RBG that allowed you to choose between seven playable characters and recruit one of the others as your teammate, while the rest become your, your rivals. Uh, the concept and story were great, but the game was extremely grindy, buggy, and just stupid hard. I've always wanted a remake, but in lieu of that, I've decided to turn it into a campaign for my D&D group. Mm. Instead of rival characters, they have rival parties consisting of characters from other games we've played. That's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, w- yeah, good w- way to harvest an, a good idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, here from the uh, listener responses, Ben, what does Dave? Or what does Rookie say? Sorry, David. David pours us one over. For Dave Slack. quoted Rookie in saying. Uh, I remember reading about Castlevania 2 NES and thinking this was going to be the greatest game ever. You could explore a huge world uh, to the right and left to find dungeons, get clues and gear from townsfolk, bring Dracula back to life, and then kill him real good. Technically, all these things uh, were true, but the game was garbage. Luckily, 35 years later, uh, someone finally made a good Castlevania 2, and it's called Infernax. Uh, If only I could mod it and some mod in some deterministic jumps. Oh, I didn't realize it didn't have deterministic <laughs> jumps. Although I guess it's more of a it's more of a Zelda two than it is a Castlevania. So, so what is a deterministic jump? The, uh, uh, you would know it if you felt it. The um, the old um, old Castlevania games, uh, you couldn't change direction uh, in the air um, uh, once you jumped. Like if you jumped, you were committed to it. Uh, okay, that's interesting. As opposed to like in Mario or Sonic, where you can steer in the middle of the air. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm yeah so ran- random thing on that i don't know why this brings it to mind but uh the most recent uh the dying light 2 my favorite uh upgrade you can get to the parkour system just because it makes no sense <laughs> is uh the ability to like turn turn around 180 in in the air <laughs> uh but the reason it's funny like it's it's basically meant to um, be for that like parkour move where you like as you jump over an edge you like grab the side and like spin and then like duck into a window or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, you know, I don't know them not being able to or not wanting to animate that. Literally, what you do is like jump, stop, turn one eighty, and go in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh so um and then random question that i've been wondering with uh castlevania uh i went back i remember way back in the day and played some of the early Cla- castlevania games on like one of the snes emulators and they were basically side scrollers yeah, yeah uh when did castlevania become part of the metroidvania uh genre symphony of the night which was the Game Boy game? No, that was the PlayStation one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Symphony Fair of the Night, nineteen ninety seven. Um, at least here in America, that's uh, that's when that came out. That was a uh, like a you know, it wasn't really intended even to be a mainline um, Castlevania game. It was kind of like oh, a spinoff, really? but then it became the uh, you know, once they moved to portable, primarily, 
you know, people loved Symphony of the Night so much that like the portable games that took that style overshadowed anything they did in 3D. Okay, because the portable was actually, I think, is the only ones I've played with any uh, degree of uh, like, you know, other than just emulating or whatever. But Mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, it really confused me. It doesn't help also that all of those games have very samey titles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, Dracula's Curse and, you know. Well, I was yeah. thinking for, like, the actual, like, portable ones in Symphony of the Night, they are all, like, musical term of the... Oh, oh so term. you were talking about the new ones. Yeah, yeah, so Harmony of Dissonance and stuff like that. No. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... I'll do mine uh, just because I was uh, just because I was inspired by the the fact that the post image for this is Fable Three. Um, man, I really wish that uh, Black and White had a good game put around the train and animal um, simulator kind mm. of thing in it. You know, mm-hmm. where you could you, you know like that your your avatar was one of a handful of different animals, and you know it started out dumb as a you know dumb as a box of rocks. Uh, and it observed your behaviors as a god, you know, things that you went around and did, and it would uh, mimic them, right? The problem is that was attached to just kind of a real dog shit um, combination like RTS and City Builder, um, mm-hmm. and that's a bummer because there was an awful lot of promise. But then again, that is lionhead.txt, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is true. David, how about you? Man, I know this is one I'm going to come up with a, like, the answer I should have gave uh, as soon as we're done recording. But the one that comes to mind right now is, um, oh, probably EVE Online, mm. in that I feel like that would be the an amazing economic uh, crafting system uh, for some game. It's just they forgot the game. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, I know if you if you like plugged that into pretty much any sci-fi MMO, that would be amazing. There's mm-hmm. just never any payoff. You're saying the crafting system specifically good? What's the crafting system? Well, like the economy and crafting system. Uh, so okay. Just, yeah, just like the the industry like pseudo four X thing. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, I, oh, good. I think me and Dennis have the same answer. Um, <laughs> so go ahead. I so I, yeah, I was going to use the example like Friday the Thirteenth and Evolve as well, um, but also extended to uh, board games have the same issue as well. Where mm. any anything that's asymmetric, where it's like one person versus four, and the one person's like super powerful, and the other four people might not be. Um, this happens in legacy games as well where you have this problem where so say somebody wins the first game of a legacy game you want to reward that player to incentivize them for winning or reward them for winning Uh, but then the problem is is now they're better fit the next game that you're playing uh against them and so now they're more likely to win again the second time and you still want to reward them and so (laughs) now you have to reward them again they're better fit for the next game and you get this like snowball effect uh and and so it's really hard to find a a board game that's kind of managed that sort of thing where you can both actually reward the person who won but then not have a snowball effect where they just like steamroll everyone uh can you know time over time and it's kind of like this with like this asymmetric games like friday the 13th or evolve where it's like it's really tough to balance them i know with the experience from friday the 13th like whoever is Jason, like greatly impacts the game. If you have like a noob playing them, everyone's going to escape, and it's not going to be that much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the flip side, if you have like an expert playing them, then everyone just gets trounced and dies. And it's like it's really tough to have like good balance mechanics in those games. So it'd be nice to mm-hmm. see a game like be able to be able to make that, but then be able to make it like consistently fun no matter who's playing it. Yeah. So well, it, it almost hard. runs into this problem of like the monster um, or the you know the powerful one player is almost kind of the DM for the yeah. game. Um, mm-hmm. But you can't like how much are you going to play as DM when you're explicitly rewarded to just trounce the other party as yeah. as hard as possible? 
Well, and yeah. it seems to me like it kind of runs into a fundamental problem of like, if if I'm playing a co-op game, it's because I don't want to be playing a competitive game. Yeah. Yeah. And vice versa. Like, I I know. Like, I I feel like that's the it. Less so for a video game, particularly for a board game. Like, if that's the whole reason I play, you know, co-op board games is because they're co-op. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's got this interesting dynamic of the, you know, so mine, mine was Evolve, if that, if that hasn't become clear yet. Um, and it's like, you know, the strength of the weaker four players is that they are a team and can play as a team. But as you said, like having your fate truly in the hands of three other people who might be randos who disconnect doesn't doesn't feel great. Mm-hmm. Well, and also um, it's like by then definition, one player is the outsider. And it's like, yeah, that's I uh, if I if I wanted that, I could just go back to high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but Ben, you I mean you use the exact word, right? Which is which is asymmetrical. Like mm-hmm. I that's that's what I want in games. I love it every time I see it. I love the idea of it. Um, and Evolve is just the most notable notable example of a game that didn't quite crack it. Um, but the more the more I can have, you know, uh, competing with each other by doing radically different things in a game, the happier I am. Mm-hmm. So, I you know, I, Dead by Daylight, I guess, is is the the second life uh, of Evolve in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and they, they I, seem to have done a pretty good job with it. And that solves like- the problem. You're talking about David, where you can queue for either killer or survivor in that game. I think. True. I I feel like uh, the the one game I've seen asymmetric uh, do well would be uh, the cycle back when it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, that sounds like everybody's answer. And that also sounds like a segment. Thank you, everybody, for uh, responding. If you would like to participate, you can go to uh, the level.com. <laughs> sorry, facebook.com slash the level and uh, watch the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. I guess you could go to the level podcast.com. That does work, but you won't be able to answer. <laughs> right. The end boss. Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about uh, things that are happening in the world of video games around us that we're excited about. Dennis, you posted yours here first. Uh, so what's happening on television? Yeah, I foreshadowed this. Uh, God of War is on my PS4 bucket list, and uh, it just got a little more urgent because, uh, like I guess they're doing with every video game now, it's yeah. hitting a TV series. Um, and so this one, this one is coming out on Prime Video, theoretically. Uh, and I think it's pretty early in production. Um, but yeah, this this is just a, an interesting trend continuing where uh, I don't know who flipped the switch and decided that we're we're going to do video game shows now. Mm-hmm. Um, but 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 boy, howdy, are they? So um, yeah, it's a, the, the, I guess the the list that's shorter is video games that don't have a TV series. <laughs> I think uh, once uh, uh, HBO got The Last of Us, there was a bit of a um a bit of a rush at studios to go after other mm-hmm. go after other stuff although they weren't the first i mean uh netflix had castlevania uh stuff of yep. that nature yeah well, netflix did a or is doing a, a devil may cry as well so oh, i never heard about that well i mean yeah. the devil may cry anime was pretty good yeah. yeah that's on there and then um i think they are doing a reboot of that i don't know if it's animated still or not but yeah yeah the, the interesting thing i think uh, you know, I, obviously they're doing it off of the most recent God of War game because that has, you know, a comprehensible a story and a, yeah, a character that can be, if not liked, related to. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I want to see the schmucks that picked up the old God of War franchise to do a, a real, uh, <laughs> uh, real action. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it, we got uh, the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're stuck with it now. Um which is, is just like I imagine to be, you know, the intro to a, a porn video, but just the porn never quite shows up. It just gets more and more violent. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, man. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, going on to my story. Uh, so back toward the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a massive bundle of games on itch.io uh, to raise money for uh, various causes related to, uh, you know, medical uh, stuff. Well, they're doing it again. Uh, there is the itch.io bundle for Ukraine, uh, which has a similar uh, a similar value proposition, uh, just about 1,000 works uh, for $10, those 1,000 works being worth 6500 all told. Um, with the proceeds uh, going, it's a minimum of $10, uh, proceeds going to International Medical Corps, uh, which should feel pretty obvious, and then also Voice of Children, uh, which is a specifically Ukrainian uh, charity that helps uh, children with uh, things like, sh- you know, aid and shelters and stuff like that. Especially important as, you know, we all see the horrifying imagery and just the, I don't know, talking about it more would make me angry. And I don't want to be angry. I would like to focus on the cool thing that game developers are doing uh, to, you know, raise money to help people who desperately need it. And there's cool stuff in here, too. Uh, like Skatebird is a big one. Um, Celeste uh is is in there minute is a is a cool game i've talked about super hot if you haven't played super hot what's wrong with you um <laughs> get this and play super hot baba is you is fun i i i, I, I could comprehend at least the first half of it <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they, they have a couple of jealous talked about too they have sundred and they have night call on here uh-huh oh, oh man. so is one of the best games i've ever played yeah it's in there so I, I realized that the first half of Baba is You is literally Baba I. So I'm imagining Cole looking at Baba is You and going, Baba I. <laughs> bye bye. <Whoops. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, I didn't even go in here. Uh, yeah, no, they've got Cloud Gardens. That's a fun little, uh, a, a fun little game. Um, oh, there's good. Uh, there's some good horror stuff in here. There's like tabletop books uh, included. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The hardest part is figuring out what games you actually own after buying it or paying for it. The, the, yeah, the, the, there are sites. Uh, there was a site for the previous one where, like, you could do like a do a search and uh, and see based on it. Who spookwares in here? Oh yeah, there's there's tons of good stuff. Glitter Mitten Grove, uh, Baldi's Basics. Yeah, neat. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff, and th- there is a good deal of overlap from the first bundle. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, that's that. The selection of games is only half the reason you're doing it. It's ten fucking dollars. Like that's not nothing. I'm not going to judge you, but like, yeah, this is an opportunity. If you missed it the first time, you can do this. And also, if you donated the first time, this is also a worthy cause. Yeah. (sighs) Um. So that's mine. Um. I'm excited about that. Uh. Ben, did you put one in? I have nothing. Okay. Sorry. And it's so- after it's after seven o'clock, so I'm not going to look anything up. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh so we'll round out here. Uh I'm excited about this, David. Hey David. <laughs> what's going on in the world of the red hot chili peppers? <laughs> yeah, so this is actually something I didn't know was a thing. I've you know heard Californication. I'd never actually seen the music video. It's but a, it's a good it's... music video. Say it again? It's a good music video. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's um you know, kind of the, the band members in a video game and it's kind of fun because it's what would you say? Would this be like PS1, PS2? Th- this felt explicitly dreamcasty to me. There's something about yeah. the look huh. on yeah. this. And I'm, yeah. I, I'm not saying that like as a as as a burn, but like it looks like it looks like it is the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, for lack of a better word, band bandmates, band members, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of playing uh, just like a whole bunch of like, but like a like a uh, Dreamcast game uh, demo disc, and so right. like it was pretty mind blowing at the time when it came out. You know, because the 3D animation, et cetera, whatever. But also I felt really catered to because like I love I like the Dreamcast and I like the, you know, the aesthetic of those games. So uh, continue the story, David. Sorry. Yeah. And I like it's, you know, having someone who didn't, you know, this was a thing for me the first time around. So, yeah, I don't have any nostalgia for it, but I, I like the fact that it's very evocative. Mm-hmm. In that, like, 
all of the scenes, it's like, oh yeah, I played that game. I have no idea what that game is, but I definitely played that. Yeah. Um, but now you can actually play that game because <laughs> someone made a game of, uh, you know, made the actual game in the uh, music video and you can download it and play it. <laughs> it doesn't play the song, but there are some buttons that will automatically uh, load up a browser window with the song <laughs> with the song in YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um red hot chili peppers was like one of the early bands that was very big on don't put our stuff on youtube <laughs> I, I, I know that's changed now just because times have changed but fuck those fools yeah. <laughs> yeah. um uh, yeah, yeah so like this is this is an itch an, an itch game and like I, I i've i've wanted this ever i saw like a joke tweet where somebody said game jam where people make the games from their californication video and turns out this the, the this person um uh what's their name uh co uh com coma coma and dog dev uh co yeah coma and dog dev um or mikel uh just do a search for uh californication on itch and you'll probably get it the fact that this person made it is super cool um because for as much as it's embarrassing music uh californication is one of the first albums that i bought with my own money so Mm -hmm. you know so there's nostalgia there yep. it's you good can, video game music you can go back to the times when it was acceptable to be playing guitar shirtless like oh, all the time not <laughs> ju not just shirtless my friend have i got some news on the concert yeah <laughs> have i got some news about the red hot chili peppers for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, <laughs> um, I've been I've been watching um, the the video on mute as we've been talking about it, and there is a section of this game where they jump the car through a um, donut stand, like giant donut on the roof thing, foreshadowing um, the like viral challenge in GTA Five to mm -hmm. jump through the uh, it's like hold the nuts donut shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. um a sign in ever more elaborate ways so red hot chili peppers did it first pioneers so that wasn't where i thought that might be going because we we're talking about uh clothing optional and you're like whoa i'm watching this video <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm getting some ideas about how to use a sock <laughs> oh uh, man those silly silly men um <laughs> how do you all feel about bundling it up they're silly old men now, which yeah. is kind of scary. Oof. Uh, I asked the question, how do we feel about buttoning it up? I, I, need to... I, need, I need someone to button it for me because my hands don't work that well anymore. I'm old. <laughs> no, that's button. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you doing the thing. Um, if you would, uh, oh, oh, so I, yes, I should say, uh, we've been doing, um, a ton of backend work on the Patreon and stuff like that. So if you're hearing this, uh, you know, if you had the, if you're wondering, Hey, why didn't this episode show up on one feed or another, go look at Patreon uh, and see, because we changed the way that we, um, are doing, um, early release. So there's a there's there's a separate feed ah. so that the uh, uh, early release public stuff is not mixed in with the premium stuff uh, to make it for a hopefully less cluttered and more controllable experience. And there are other things there. Uh, there's also um, I made new episode art um, for, uh, for for the episodes. So you guys, if you want to go to the level uh, you can you can see like the cool little template that I made for all of the episode. Oh. art. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was this? I think. Did you debut this with the uh, Ace Attorney? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I remember seeing that. And be like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, no, didn't, I, I just know that was a universal thing. Yeah. I'm. I'm slowly going back and doing past episodes, but we've done over 400 of them, so it might take some time to fill it out. But going forward, yeah, you think a bit. <laughs> <laughs> i i hope you can mostly um pull from the banners that you already had right uh yeah for for, for a lot of them uh there's also like I've, I've i've kept the source on most of them as well you know so smart man yeah i don't delete something unless i really really have to uh, is kind of the thing so that's a, mm. a, a just a just a common just a common thing in my life i'm discovering 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv if you want to hear uh, the bonfire side chats about Elden Ring. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, the, the first two episodes of that season are going to be free. So the um, uh, the first impressions episode that we did and then the next one, which is going to be about the mechanics um, and the opening um the, the, that that's going to be avail- available for everybody as well so we're giving folks a taste um uh otherwise ratings reviews am i forgetting anything big don't think so all right um i've been cole ross you can find me on twitter at cole ross i've been dennis furia you can find me on twitch streaming near uh at deck of wonders I'm David Mysmith. Uh, you can find me in the uh, lands between, unless I'm using the new stealth mechanic. <laughs> in which case, try me. <laughs> I've been Ben Merkel. <laughs> and uh, stick around for some titles. So it's going to both of these are David specials and they're both really good. It's going to be real hard to beat this first one. That I'm going to say, though, okay. All right. uh, the only way to play is not to win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to oh, go hard in the paint on that one. And then uh, the other <laughs> one is uh, uh, they use discord to create order, which is I had literally <laughs> the same too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have any others, David? Uh, sorry, sorry. So I actually uh, had uh, three. I had a uh, fun bit. I'll probably drop in an episode or two. <laughs> I had non-video game game content. <laughs> and I had, ha ha ha, nah, let's button. <laughs> um, uh, what, was, I, what was the I middle, with Cole. What was the middle one there, David? The what? What was the, what was the second one that you said? Non-video game game content. Okay. Non-video game game content. Okay. Uh, ben, what you got? I have my son's first Max Min, and I have <laughs> I have it just gets more and more violent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I will second the only way to play is not to win. Yeah, that I'm fine was, with that either, David's. <laughs> it really bothers me that you guys say Max Men. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm only, only saying it to that. mock Ben. Okay. Oh, shit. Do I say too much? Is it not no, good to no, say? No, it, it, you it, say it backwards. Yeah, it's oh, it, it, Min-Max. Yeah, yeah um, min, 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 Min-Max is the one that I first heard, like, back, like, <laughs> you know, when I first started playing, like, Tabletop and also, like, yeah. playing stuff on, uh, uh, play, you know, play, playing EverQuest. Um, no, I, like, I am mortified that you thought I was condoning that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I just maybe I just alphabetized it in my mind or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is the best pen thing I've ever heard. I, so, I, I like that. So you max min the min maxing by alphabetizing. Hey, 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 David, that that can't be the title. We've already picked a title. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Polls have closed. <laughs> yeah no i'm not saying that to make you self-conscious ben i uh, i i uh i just uh, i wrote i wrote it down max slash min and, and i had to I, I had to i had to voice he my the, the the point of the point of language is communication and i think we all understand what you mean so <laughs> uh, uh, efficient communication however would demand that you reverse it <laughs> no. <sighs> to be yeah. fair to be fair uh mm-hmm. all right well um i need to go to bed because i'm very tired yeah i gotta hear you crazy kooks good hanging out <laughs> yeah, take, you guys. take care everybody bye, bye. bye.